I'd like to, to uh, thank you, the organizers, for the invitation to show a little bit of we are, what we, what's the, the things that are going on in Brazil right now. Um, and uh, the title is about against all odds, because uh, trying to pursue the diagnosis and the follow-up of patients uh, of, with genetic disorders in Brazil, it's a, a little bit hard right now. We are facing in Brazil uh, a, a good moment because they're trying to put the, the legislation about rare diseases and finally they are trying to make it real in Brazil. But so far we have uh, living with uh, a lot of uh, contrasts in Brazil. So on one hand we have um, beautiful places like Rio de Janeiro. On the other hand, we have a lot of favelas in Brazil. And one of the big problems in Brazil that I, I'm not seeing that they will solve in the last 10 years maybe, is that uh, at least the 10% the richest in Brazil have almost 42% of all the nation's income. So the, the, the income in Brazil, has, they, are, they are highly concentrated in a few hands. And the, the 10 poorest people in Brazil have 1% of the national income. So the problem is that we have a few people with a lot and many, many people with very few. So this is a problem because uh, you can create the, the violence that you can see in the movies. Thinking about it, in 1988, uh, there's a new, new constitution in Brazil, and they created an, a unified health system, trying to give access to health um, and services to people that could not pay for it. So they started to, to create what we know as SUS, that would be the, our uh, uh, unified health system in Brazil. And we have uh, uh, triplicated the people that needed the, the, the service from 13 million to 190 million people in one year. So it was a little bit chaotic because of that. And the problem is that they have not thought about genetic diseases when they planned this. So none of the genetic tests or genetic access to the genetic uh, uh, diagnosis in Brazil was uh, uh, provided because of that. They are thinking about the most more common diseases. It was nice because most of the people now, 80% of the, the, the population in Brazil, they rely on the system. They don't have insurance. So, and, may, and even the private insurance in Brazil, they do not cover for genetic tests as well. So it's a little bit hard trying to diagnose a patient in Brazil. We have uh, uh, our hospital here. It's a uh, uh, campus of the University of Sao Paulo. So uh, just to be uh, clear, we have Sao Paulo, the capital city of the Sao Paulo state. Yes, they try to put a little a lot, the same name and <laughs> most times. And the Sao Paulo capital city is a very uh, large city, big city, with almost uh, more than 19 million inhabitants. In our city, it's a very, very small compared to Sao Paulo. We have uh, 600,000 inhabitants, but the metropolitan area is about two, two, two million inhabitants because we have a lot of uh, medium to large cities in this area. So it was very nice because it was the first um, medical genetics uh, residence program in Brazil. And uh, it, uh, for uh, cl uh, clinical geneticists, it was the pl first place in Brazil to start the medical residence. So there's a little bit of history because of that. And uh, when you, you, they tried to build a, a hospital there, it was uh, in 1952, and they, 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 they turned out to be one of the, the good the best, uh, one of the three best medical centers in Brazil. And it was very interesting because they started this hospital with a, a clinical genetics unit uh, in the hospital. So we started to do some, uh, to look a lot of patients with genetic diagnosis because of that. And nowadays, that's the only data I could provide. Is, uh, I, I asked for more updated data, but they could not provide me on time. So in 2003, the hospital provided inpatient care for 30, uh, 33,000 uh, people and out of, in our, out of patient ambulatory care to uh, almost 6,000 people, 600,000 people. And uh, all the, the, the medical care is provided free of charge. So it's a public hospital. So the patients did not pay for the, they have to come to the hospital and uh, they see, uh, but the problem is that who pays for it? It's the government, but sometimes we have problems with genetic tests because they are not covered. But still that, we're trying to do some network in Brazil. Uh, right now we have been following uh, um, uh, uh, some patients in our center. They come from uh, different areas in Brazil. Usually uh, there are patients from uh, states that they have a genetic service there, but they cannot do a lot in, uh, in their state. So uh, colleagues, they refer the patient to us, trying to have a, a better evaluation of the patients. And sometimes they do not think about CDGs, so we are always 
trying to think about DG in our evaluation, and then we start to have some patients. And in Brazil, uh, right now, we only have two centers for diagnosis of patients with CDG. One is in the south of Brazil. They do the uh, uh, iso isofoxin of uh, surrogate transferring. And the other center is in Brasilia, the capital of the country. That's from the SARA network of rehabilitation hospitals. The problem is that SARA is the, the best place to rehabilitation, but they only accept patients that have some physical impairment. So if you don't have a physical impairment, they don't ask, uh, uh, accept the patient. So it, <laughs> yeah, so it's a little bit. Uh, um, a close it. so we don't, it's funny but if I need to do a, a test on one of my patients I cannot send the test for Sarah because the patient should go to Sarah and should have any kind of motor impairment to go there so it's public but it's not public so uh, we don't have access to, to SARA. But they have a nice, nice uh, screening uh, strategy for CDG patients and right now they have more than 30 patients with CDG in, the, in SARA, because any patient that go to SARA, they do the, the screening for CDG. So it's a, it's a nice strategy to, and they found a lot of patients because of that. But they are, the, the rest of the, the country rely on Porto Alegre to and we send. The problem is that most of the times you have to send in dry ice, the serum, and some areas in Brazil, we don't have access to dry ice. So I believe that we have a lot of sub-diagnosis in Brazil because of that, because it's hard to, to, to have access to the test. But it's provided also full, uh, without tar charges for public patients. So right now uh, in Brazil, uh, we have more clinicians thinking about CDG. It's uh, not easy because uh, uh, most of the medical schools and most of the uh, medical residents in, in pediatrics, for example, never heard about CDG. It's, when you talk about CDG, they're like, what? What is this? It's funny because lysosomal mitochondria, they are very popular. But when you talk about CDG, people, what's that? And, uh, but uh, they start to, do, to think about it. We, uh, we have trying to teach them and uh, give um, some awareness about this uh, group of diseases and about the, how the patients look like sometimes. And for example, in this, this uh, paper was published uh, last year from the SARA network, and they have a screening uh, 2,000 patients, 2,600 patients, uh, because they have psychomotor delay, mental retardation with uh, some kind of motor impairment, and they have found 32 affected patients. So it's an, a nice number. And 26 patients with CDG1 and 6 patients with CDG2. And this is uh, very interesting because they're all uh, patients that never had access to do the uh, IAF in, uh, in, in our country. So when they go to, to the SAR network, they do the whole uh, workup. And here it was a, a work done in, in our center, but it, uh, the focus was a little bit different. We were more specific in our evaluation. We only looked about patients who have cerebral ataxias with hypogonadism. So most of our patients were adult patients, and then we look for um, uh, mitochondrial coenzyme Q10 deficiency, and we look for CDG. And for our surprise, we found when uh, we have evaluated uh, a number of 19 patients, and we found one CDG uh, patient in our cohort that was 35 years old when had a, the, her diagnosis of CDG, and she's here. And uh, it's funny because it's a small family, and she was in our hospital uh, since she was, I was looking her records, she was in our hospital since she was mm, 13 years old. And uh, she wa I don't know why she had a diagnosis of Turner syndrome, because she has done a karyotype in the past with one, only, one, only one cell with 45 chromosomes. The other 19, 99 cells, they are normal. So I don't know why they put uh, a label of uh, Turner syndrome on her. And it was very interesting because she had a primary amenorrhea. She has a, 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 it was a slowly progressive disorder, but most of the time it, it, it looks like static uh, uh, ataxia for her. And she had some kind of developmental delay, uh, but she, she was able to speak and she was able to, to tell histories to Sorry. everybody. One minute. Ah, all right, right. just. And then uh, we found that she has a, a, a mutations for CDG1A. It was very interesting, and she's her like that. Unfortunately, we lose, lost contact uh, with her because her brother was a drug dealer, and so the, uh, he was killed, and then the family had to move on to another, and so we don't have contact with them. Yes, it's the kind of my patients, unfortunately. Most of the patients, we have problems with this. 
And there are the other papers uh, from the group of Rio de Janeiro. They are doing this uh, evaluation for patients uh, with already diagnosed of CDG. They're managing some patients. So it's nice to see that it's growing uh, a little bit slow, but it's growing the knowledge about CDG. Now we have uh, a presentation here in the SSIM, a poster about the management, management of patients with CDG in Brazil. So I believe that we're growing up in this aspect. I'd like to acknowledge all the people that are helping us with the molecular and the biochemical analysis. It's a, a long list of people. So uh, Dr. Kimi Raymond, Dr. Giuliani, Dr. Gertz Matis, and the clinicians, Dr. Friesen, Mor Dr. Morava, Lefebvre, Dr. Wevers. So um, a lot of people that are helping us to understand and better evaluate these patients of CDG in Brazil. So it's uh, ongoing work. Thank you very much.